Hello there, young scientific professionals, and I say scientific professionals because after the past few videos and activities, you should be feeling pretty confident about your ability to do science. You know, set up scientific investigations, execute and utilize the major scientific practices, and observe and infer the heck out of things. With all of that under your belt, we are going to move on and tackle the last lesson of our introductory unit. And that lesson is going to cover the unifying themes of biology and also the properties of life. So the topics covered in this video down here at the bottom, they're right up here. Okay? So the first thing we're going to look at is the properties of life, and then we're going to follow it up with the unifying themes of biology. So let's get started here. You are in biology this year. You are going to take a class that is indeed the study of life. You're going to study living things. In biology, you refer to a living thing as an organism. Okay? There are some obvious organisms out there. For instance, uh, there's people. Okay? Um, some of you might immediately think about plants. And some of you may say other animals. All right? But there are also some living things that are so small that you cannot see them with the naked eye. Alrighty? So again, you're studying life. Anything that is living is known as an organism. Pretty simple. So, regardless of how small or big, all of these things share common properties of life. So if you're an organism, no matter how big or small you are, you share a set of common properties with other organisms. So what does something have to have to be considered living? Take a couple of seconds and jot down some traits you think an object or an entity, that's a fancy way for saying thing, must have to be considered an organism. Pause the video, jot them down, go. Well, what you got? Uh, typical answers that we see when we ask this question might be uh, you have to breathe. Okay. Maybe you have to eat. Maybe you got to have a mouth. I hear a lot of times, uh, you got to have eyes and you have to have ears. Okay. So I see a lot of those types of answers. All of those answers are not bad, but they're pretty basic, okay? They're pretty basic. Um, typically, they're a result of this world just kind of being, or everything in it being humanized, all right? They're not bad answers, but they do lead us to some of the actual properties. The first two properties kind of deal with what typically people and immediately associate to something as living as you got to have eyes, okay? Or you got to have a mouth. So, if you have eyes, you're using them to absorb light, okay? Light is a piece of information from your surroundings that is being collected and processed by your body. What is your body doing with it? It's responding to it, okay? If you ever turn the lights off in a room, watch and see what somebody's eyes do. If all of a sudden you turn on a light and it's really bright, you squint. So your body is naturally responding to that stimuli. That first trait, we call that responsiveness or responding to stimuli. Mouths are used to gather and digest food, and food gives you energy. Okay? So, for instance, this gal down here that's shoving spaghetti into her mouth, she is consuming energy. Why? So she can go out and function, carry out her daily functions, okay? All organisms need energy, whether they can generate it themselves or have to find it elsewhere. Organisms need energy for structures to carry out their specific functions. The sum of all chemical reactions in your body, the creation of energy, the using of energy, etc., is known as metabolism. Oh, running out of room. There, squeeze the MMT in. Okay? All organisms possess a metabolic rate, 
and the word metabolism is referring to the fact that an organism requires energy. So, there's the first two properties of life. Responsiveness, or response to stimuli, and metabolism, the one dealing with energy. Okay? Now, there's five others. So what are they? Well, the third one is all about cellular organization. Okay? All organisms are composed of one or more cells. Some are extremely highly organized, some are very simplistic, like this paramecium that you see here up at the top. Okay? This guy right here. Alrighty? So, oops, get that out of there. What's the fourth one? Reproduction. All organisms, I'm just going to put ORG period here, reproduce to keep the species alive and well. Little chick hatching out of his egg. Homeostasis. This is kind of a new one for you. All organisms are working for internal balance and adjusting to their external stimuli. So this guy that's sweating right here, you can see the perspiration through his armpits. It's probably extremely hot in the room that he's in. If his body did not sweat to naturally cool him down, he would get too hot and he would no longer live. It's another one. Heredity. Heredity is all about parents passing on traits to their offspring. Okay? And finally, the seventh property of life is growing and developing. Alright? All organisms grow and all organisms develop. Okay? Growing is getting taller and wider. And little girl right here, you can see that she is getting uh, her height measured against the wall. Developing would be, uh, for instance, a teenager going through puberty. All right, or a tree actually uh, developing its reproductive organs. All righty. So those are the seven. Let's see if we can't squeeze them in here. Almost. Those are the seven traits for life, properties of life. So now, for something to officially be considered living, though, for something to officially be considered living, which of those seven must it have? Well, it actually has to have all of them. Okay? For something to be considered living, it has to have or have had all of the seven traits at one time or another. Okay? The activity that we're going to complete in class covering this material is going to further cover those properties of life and uh, help you to better understand them and apply them. But one trick is those little pieces of criteria there, that's how we deem something as living or not living. So, last topic here. Let's talk about the subjects within biology that we'll be covering this semester. Uh, we could word this last section of the video as sub-studies of biology, but we could also call it unifying, unifying themes of biology. Basically, there are seven themes in biology. Major themes, major concepts that help to cut to the core of the study of life. So the seven themes that we're going to study this year are, the first one, cellular structure and function. All living things are made of one or more cells. Okay? They are highly organized, tiny little units with thin coverings. They are the basic unit of structure and function in all organisms, with some organisms having more complex cells than others. Some organisms are single-celled, for instance this amoeba right here, while other organisms are extremely complex and multicellular, like this human being down here trying to balance on this little wee exercise board. Uh, to give you an idea of their size, you have right about now 100 trillion. Let's try to draw this out. So uh, let's see here. One, two, three, hundred thousands, 
millions, billions, trillions. 100 trillion cells composing your body right now. While an amoeba, again, this guy right here, has one. Some studies that examine this theme are cell biology, molecular biology, and microbiology. All right? This diagram down here at the bottom kind of shows you what we call the cellular hierarchy for an organism. Cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and finally, the organism. Theme number two, reproduction. All living things can reproduce or make more of their own kind from one generation to the next. Some reproduce rapidly, for instance, bacteria going from one to two to four to eight to 16 to 32, to 64, to 128, to 256, to 500 and, excuse me, 600 and, nope, 500 and 12, whatever it may be, it doubles and doubles and doubles, and here, right here we've got a diagram where it's showing it's doubling in increments of 20 minutes, so bacteria can reproduce rapidly, whereas an elephant, this guy right here, would have been in gestation or would have been pregnant for two years with this little guy. Okay? Regardless of the time frame, organisms do not live forever. So, reproduction is extremely necessary just for the species' survival. Some studies that examine this theme are human development, embryology, and any area involving fertility. Theme number three we talked about is one of the properties of life, and that is metabolism. We stated that metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions in an organism. All right. Living organisms carry out many different chemical reactions in order to obtain and use energy to run the processes of life. All living things use energy to grow, to move, and to process information. Metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions carried out in an organism. So almost all energy that an organism may use is originally gathered from the sun, believe it or not. Hence this picture with the plants with the sunlight kind of coming through the leaves. Right now, there's cells in these leaves of this plant that are carrying out photosynthesis and churning out basic chemical compounds that end up becoming some of the basic food that fuels these plants and other things that consume them. Okay, Plants, algae, and some bacteria take in sunlight and through photosynthesis create chemical energy. This chemical energy is then used by plants, algae, and or bacteria and is also consumed by other organisms so they can have energy to carry out their daily functions. If you want to know Metabolism, if you want to take a look at all the chemical reactions that take place in a body, enter metabolic charts and try to check out a diagram like this. Pretty crazy to think that humans have actually studied metabolism enough as a theme of biology to kind of have a chemical chart of all the chemical reactions that happen inside of us. The fourth theme, homeostasis. Maintaining internal balance in response to external and internal stimuli. Organisms must maintain a, maintain a stable internal environment in order to function properly. The maintaining of a stable internal environment in response to external stimuli, i.e. your surroundings, your environment, is known as homeostasis. An organism unable to remain internally stable will die. So, we had the example of somebody sweating earlier to cool themselves down because it was so hot. Well, in this example with the girl with a heavy coat and a scarf, She's got a coat on. She is responding to her stimuli by putting on a heavier coat to protect her from the cold weather so her body can remain that steady 98 degrees where everything functions at its most efficient rate. Some studies that look closely at metabolism... Ooh, sorry, forgot this. Um, some of the studies that look closely at metabolism, since I didn't mention that last slide, are biochemistry, cell biology, cellular processes, molecular biology, and sometimes ecology. Um... Some things that look at homeostasis, some of the subjects could be zoology, botany, microbiology, ecology, and cell bio. Theme 5, heredity. All living things are able to pass on traits to their offspring. Traits can be physical, mental, and or emotional. These traits are encoded on genes, and the passing of them from parent to offspring is known as heredity. Understanding what gene codes for what and how the passing can sometimes get mixed up, i.e. mutations, is an important study to biologists. The major stub study of biology that focuses on this is called genetics. Evolution. The great diversity of life on Earth is due to a long history of change. 
Change in the inherited characteristics of species over generations is called evolution. Scientists are constantly studying this theme to better understand the tree of life and to gather a better understanding of relationships, both past and present, between all living organisms. So this tree of life right here, here's where we're trying to develop known relationships in the current, both physical, all right, and also at the molecular level, and also from the past, okay? Uh, typically, we think of evolution and we look at this picture right here, okay? I'm not a big fan of this one because it makes it people think that humans came from monkeys. That's not the study of evolution. That's not what evolution says, okay? Um, but we've got some good data, for instance, from Charles Darwin's trip to the Galapagos Islands about the adaptations from the finches, okay? So we're going to study evolution, and it's going to be a pretty interesting topic, all right? Biologists are interested in developing connections, but also in how and why changes over time occur. Some sub-studies that focus on evolution are systematics, taxonomy, cladistics, phylogeny, embryology, anatomy, and molecular biology. Unifying theme number seven, and the final one here, interdependence. Understanding how living things interact with each other and how they interact with their non-living surroundings is the last major theme of biology we're going to look at this year. Many organisms are reliant on each other, either directly or indirectly. This theme is known as interdependence. The overall health and function of a group of different organisms depends heavily on how they interact with each other, hence why this is one of the major themes. The major area of biology that looks at interdependence is known as ecology. So we've got some examples here of interdependence with this food web, how this owl relies on this mouse for food, this mouse relies on this mosquito, okay? This bird relies on the mosquito, all right? This bird also relies on the caterpillar, the grasshopper, and the ladybug. So there's a lot of intertwined um, relationships, either directly or indirectly, between organisms and other organisms, and organisms and non-living organisms, okay? So, as Porky Pig would say, that's all, folks, all right? That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're comfortable with these concepts, both properties of life and unifying themes of biology, okay? Be ready to apply this knowledge in class. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do an activity that's going to help you build a better understanding with these concepts and also help you practice and understand by applying these concepts, all right? Um, another question I have for you is, did you complete the guided note sheet that went with this video? I hope you did, okay? I hope you did. If not, make sure you do that. That is a deadline grade, okay? Not going to grade it academically. We'll probably check through it in class as a major, as a whole group, um, but you do need to have it done. And finally, give me some feedback, all right? Email me and tell me, or tell me in person, um, what you think of the video, what you think of this video, what you think of the video so far, and, and just how things are going, okay? want to want to have constant feedback and discussion with you guys. So uh, that's all I got for this one, and I'll see you in class.